a car over here, which is on a flat road. The forces that are acting on this car, and you always need to remember to draw the tail of the force arrow on the object being pushed or pulled. So if you're talking about forces on the car, you must draw the forces starting from the car. For example, that's the weight of the car, which is the force downwards. Now there must therefore be another force acting on the car, otherwise the car would be getting smushed into the ground. The answer is there's an equal force of the ground pushing upwards, which is called the normal force. Or if you like, Fn, I sometimes call it. Now if this card turns a corner, which it could do, let's say that it turns into the corner the way it is in the picture, which is sort of not really going to work because we're looking at the forwards, but if it turns to the left, then it needs to have a force acting to the left. And therefore that's acting towards the centre of the circle of motion. And that's a centripetal force because it's towards the centre. So we can put FC here as well. AC would be acceleration centripetal, FC for force centripetal. The relationship between the two is FC equals MAC because F equals MA. Um, in terms of this particular situation, what is the force causing this centripetal acceleration? Friction. Because what's causing it is that these tyres are rubbing against the road, which means the road is pushing the car to the left. If the road was too slippery, the road wouldn't be able to push the car to the left as much, so the car wouldn't move to the left as much, it would move further off the road. So the reliance is on providing that force to push the car into the curve. So in this particular situation, this is friction on the car, on the tyres. Friction on the tyres. If we go and have a look at this situation now over here, there's still the weight acting on the car. So it's now going around the corner, the same corner, but this time it's banked. So this is still W equals mg here. The weight always goes downwards towards the centre of the earth, yeah. yeah. But the normal force does change its angle because now the normal to the surface is pushing the car out like that. So although the weight is still downwards, this force is now outwards with a little bit of horizontal. The normal force is now pointing outwards as well as upwards. Now it still has to cancel out gravity, which means that the vertical component of the normal force is still holding the car upwards. But now, because of the banking, there's now also a bit of horizontal force in the normal force. We call it the horizontal component of the normal force. Usually that would be zero on a flat road, and as it gets steeper and steeper, the horizontal becomes greater and greater of the normal force. So if we draw this down here, we draw this whole vector situation, you've got normal force Fn, you've got one component which is the vertical component, I'm going to call Fnv, and you've got another component which is Fnh. They add together, and you can see that if you make the angle of the normal force point more horizontally, that is the banking angle is steeper, then it will get more and more horizontal force as you go. In terms of where is theta in this triangle, it's up here. If you want to prove that mathematically, you can talk to me another time about it, but it's enough for you just to know that that's theta up in that corner. It's got to do with the way that the normal force is 90 degrees and this theta is down here. And those of you who have done spesh could probably prove that if you want to. Okay, what's the magnitude of FNV? Same as the weight, yes. Because if the vertical component of the force up was not equal to the vertical force down, it would either move up or down. So it must be equal to the weight. So you can just put mg there. If you want to say in your explanation, force must be upwards force must be cancelling out weight, therefore FNV equals mg, that's fine. But it just must be clear either from your diagram, like this, or from 
an explanation somewhere that that's why it's MG. You can't just arbitrarily tell me it's MG for no reason at all. Um, what's the horizontal force equal to? The answer is it depends on what situation you're in. Um, it, it is actually equal to mv squared over r if there is no friction required. Because if, if it's an optimal banking, the horizontal component of the normal force is exactly equal to the centripetal force. So you could say if optimum angle for that speed, that is all the force is provided by horizontal by FNH, or the centripetal force provided by FNH, if optimum angle then F in H is MV squared on R. I'll say that again, then you'll be able to rewind it if it works. Um, if all the centripetal acceleration, that's this bit here, is provided by the horizontal component of normal force, then F in H equals centripetal force. They're the same thing. Normally, some of that F in V squared on R would be provided by friction as well, but at exactly the right angle, it's just the normal force's horizontal component. This now allows us to solve for the equation, finally. So if we put these together, we use this triangle, we've got... Can sort of run out of space here? Can I move across? Excellent. We've got 10 theta... Yeah. Tan theta is now equal to opposite over adjacent, it always is, which in this case the opposite is FNH and the adjacent is FNV. And we know what they are. FNH is this here, F FNV is that there. So we have MV squared on R all divided by MG. which then leads us to uh, the m's are going to cancel out. And remember that mv squared on r, when you're rearranging fractions on fractions, mv squared on r is on mg is the same as m squared on r uh, times, sorry, that's supposed to be times, times by 1 on the denominator. You flip them times if you divide by fractions which is now meaning we're going to have, these will cancel out, and we end up with exactly what we wanted, v squared on Rg. Any questions? Can you do that step of the last step again, where you went from the fraction on the fraction on the fraction? This one, the, so where I converted from the fraction on the fraction, or to the fraction? Um, Whenever you have a fraction, and it's good that we can get this recorder as well, that's fine. I'm just going to use a little bit of a brown border here to show this is separate. Anytime you have a fraction on a fraction, so it doesn't matter what it is, if it's A on B on C on D, that's the same as A on B times D on C by definition. You just flip and times. So if in this, like in this case, it's not a whole fraction on the bottom, it's mg, which is the same as mg on 1. So it becomes 1 on mg. Okay? Any other questions? If it's optimum angle, fnh is either greater or less than mv squared on r and friction is making up the difference. And if you do, if you have a look at the op optional revision questions that were on the gravitation assignment, feel free to have a go at rewording those in terms of FNH and MV squared on R and resubmitting them to me and I'll check them for you. Any other questions? <laughs>